we welcome those who are watching us on the live streaming hallelujah in jesus name we welcome them to the light of life jeevan jyoti in jesus name turn with me to ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 onwards we will continue to read according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved thank you lord may the lord bless the hearing and the reading of the word as we continue series on ephesians one thing i would like you to keep it as a word that will coin as a phrase is that we are all seated in heavenly places together with in christ jesus repeat after me this scripture that this consciousness be there in us that we know our reference point where we are positioned because positioning is so important for us for god to do great things in our life so repeat this scripture after me as i read the scripture over here this is uh, how he says that over here and he has raised us up together say it repeat after me and he has raised us up together and made us sit, sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus you know there is a, something that we'll have to understand here i'll go back to chapter 1 and chapter 1 says like this which he wrought in Christ Jesus when he raised from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is to be named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church which is his body that the fullness of him that fills all in all so you can understand when you and i are in christ jesus seated in heavenly places all the principalities all the powers all the dominions all the names that are to be named in this world and the world to come are under the feet of christ number 1 so are they under your feet too so we are operating from that friends because if we don't know where we are operating from we will be missing a big thing so we have to visualize every day we are in jesus christ you know more than condemnation consciousness it is most important to have christ consciousness in our life see the way to fight sin is to always think about jesus hallelujah see that he's with you he's always watching over you and having that mindset breaks the yoke of sin hallelujah too much of talking about sin and too much I mean, I mean it is important to talk about sin but at the same time when we get overly inhibited about that that is where the enemy enters in that is why always think about you are in Jesus Christ practice your mind to think because that's why Paul says renewing of your mind hallelujah praise god that is not what i'm going to share tonight but i'm going to talk about something very important it says over here that he has chosen us hallelujah that's a very special word the word chosen is a very special word because when we are, when whenever we were chosen for something special event or special activity we always had this kind of joy and elation in our heart that we were 
considered to be a part of whatever activity used to happen. I remember, you know, growing up uh, in, the, in, in school, you know, in those days, whenever we used to have the games period and we used to have the soccer um, uh, soccer games we used to play and we used to line up in a single file and you know we always wanted to be picked up and I always used to think oh pick me up and I used to be many times picked in the last and uh, you know I always we always wanted to be in the better team see this is not how God does God chooses us not based on your qualification God does not choose you based upon what you bring to the table he does not care about your past he does not worry about what you did in the past all your baggages your generations your culture or race or language or no matter whatever you want to name it does not matter to our Savior. He says he has chosen us. You know, he has picked us out. You know, in Acts 124, there is a place where we see that when they cast a lot to select an apostle, that is how God has chosen us. You know, in John 15, 29, he says, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you. Hallelujah. So each one of us seated in this room, is handpicked by God which means God is looking at you which means God is smiling at you he wants the best for your life he de he desires the greatest in your life you need you and I need to continuously align into that see the world always beats us down the world always says you are good for nothing the world always looks down you but that is not how it is the, but Jesus says take your chin up look up you have an esteem. You have some something that is inside of you, a DNA of a conqueror. So there is a, a plan of this choice. The plan of this choice is a sovereign act of God, which means God is the one who decides it, which means no one has to say, but God has to say, sorry tonight that God already planned it before the foundation of the world. So therefore, you cannot mess with my future. You cannot mess with my present. My past is under the blood. My present is oh, my present is blessed and my future is glorious. Hallelujah. I am going to fulfill everything in the plans and purposes of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When Paul writes... Uh, to the to the Corinthians, he says uh, that your calling, brethren, that was not many were wise men. Well, many of us were not wise. Then he says that uh, you were many of us were after the manner of flesh, nor mighty, nor of noble birth, which means there was no special qualification. See, the thing is that is the joy that you can I, I have that we were not qualified. We were not called based upon your qualification. Qualification. Your qualification did not matter whether you had PhD, whether did you, you went to school or did not go to school, did not matter. All you mattered is uh, you were created in his likeness and his image. That's what matters to God. See, that esteem a Christian should never lose. Your age does not matter. Your circumstances not matter. Your family backgrounds don't matter. All the challenges that you go through does not matter. All it matters is his calling in your life. Yeah, I'm going to come upon what, what calling means. Then he began, continues to say that he wanted to confound the wise of this world. You know, God, you and me, you know, what he wants to do is he wants to ashamed the devil. He wants to say to the devil that this is the way, this is the norm of the world. You go by the standards of the world. You are looking at the worthiness of the, of, of the way in which you have put the standards. But look what I am going to do. I am going to take the unworthy vessels. I am going to take the broken ones. I am going to take the ones the world says are good for nothing. Through them I am going to do my work. Hallelujah. He chose fishermen. He chose tax collectors. Sinners and those who lived in sin. Oh, that is the power of the gospel. Oh, the got to be something. God says, you don't have to be anything. All you need is to come to me.
I have everything. Hallelujah. See, that is the goodness and the greatness and the glory of the gospel. Hallelujah. So he they says that, and these things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. Hallelujah. So your choice is these things of this world, which the world despised, which the world looked down. There was a reproach. Though there was always an ugly eye of world your neighbors look down your family look down oh your friends look down but god said oh that is special oh that special oh he is special she is special in my eyes i don't see the way you and i see oh i see oh in the way i have to see i see their hearts see when we talk about the choice I always am reminded of David's life. See, David had no chance to be anointed. Even the prophet Samuel missed it, honestly speaking. He missed it, the one who was, was a seer and one who used to hear because he was a seer of such a measure that he could see and tell Saul that the donkey is found. That prophet also missed Because Samuel said, ask the Lord, is this the one? Is this the one? And the Lord said, I have rejected them. Oh, I'm not going based upon what the military badges that they are carrying. Hallelujah. I'm going to honor the ones that are despised. Hallelujah. If you are despised, praise God, you are the best candidate for that choice. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord that we are despised. Praise the Lord we are rejected. Praise the Lord world looks down upon because you are the choice that heaven has been looking for. God has chosen you and the things which are not to bring not the things that are so that no flesh will glory in his presence. Hallelujah. So that we can always say with boldness, oh, it was not my strength. It was nothing about me. It was all about him. Hallelujah. David had nothing to boast out. All his boast was in the Lord. Jeremiah says, let not the wise boast in his boastings, the rich in his riches, and the strong in his strength. Let the one who boasts, let him know and boast the Lord that he knows and understands him. Hallelujah. That is why Paul says in Galatians 6, 14, God forbid I should boast, save only in the cross of Lord Jesus Christ. Our boastings are about of our Savior, by which I am crucified unto the world and world unto me. Galatians 6, 14. So you and I were chosen in Christ Jesus, who of God made unto us the wisdom. So which means for your foolishness, he was the wisdom. So he replaced your foolishness with his wisdom. For in him is the wisdom. He has all the wisdom. He is the Alpha and the Omega. So the moment when you were being chosen, these all things and traits were being poured into you. Oh God, I'm not wise. That's okay. Oh my wisdom. I'm just pouring. I'm just going to dump it on you. Hallelujah. Then it says the righteousness. You are made unto him the righteousness, which means, oh, no more condemnation. The despisement of this world. The way the world that now the righteousness of Christ has been put in this choice. So there is a plan in this plan. He already has it all covered up. Oh Lord, I'm a wretched sinner. And then he says, I sanctify you through my blood and my word. My blood speaks. You and I have entrance into the very presence of God by the eternal blood, through the blood of the eternal covenant. There is a process through which he says is through the process of redemption. You and I were in the slave market. We were kept in the slave market under the shackles of devil's chain. But in the due time Christ died and he paid the price and he bought us. Hallelujah. Oh, that is why the song says, Oh, the love that sought me. Oh, the love that brought me. Wondrous grace that brought 
brought me to the fold. That is what is the the, the love sought me and the love bought me. Hallelujah. So that is the plan of God and there is a process of choice. The process of choice was in the counsel of God. When Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost, he began to say that it was the predetermined counsel of God. Oh, which means your choice and my choice was before the foundations of the world. You are so uniquely special that God cared about you before he created this world that he had a plan. The plan was if he created man, oh, and if he committed sin, what will happen? The plan was, oh, father said, I will give my son. And son said, I will lay down my life. And Holy Spirit, oh, said, I will persuade men and women, oh, knowledge of Christ that was the supreme counsel so before the foundations of the world there was a thing a process happening in eternity oh you were so uniquely special it was a part of the secret counsel of God that it says that he has spoken through the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundations of the world. Oh, this mystery of the salvation is the greatest secret. In times we be guilty of trivializing the gospel. I will over and over repeat it because it is in the sacredness. It is in the power of the we see more and more power come out in our ministry, in our lives, in our day to day. It is the power of the cross. It was secret. It was hidden. Oh, that God will send his son, oh, as the seed of the woman to destroy the works of the devil so that he is an answer to all the problems of this life and for the life to come. Oh, what a oh, slap on the face of the devil. The Bible says he made an open shame of the devil on the cross hallelujah he made him a public spectacle see that is the power of this choice he concealed it he hid it that's why Paul says the mystery of his will oh now it is revealed to us God in sundry times in diverse manners spoke through the prophets but in these last days he has spoken through his son oh who is the very image and the express image of his glory our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so it was concealed but revealed to us. The Bible says holy men were looking to see this, but God kept it. He hid it. He, in his due time, and waited through the centuries. You and I are so special. See, there is something called false pride, but there is also oh, low self-esteem. And to live in a place of, uh, a place of low self-esteem is also wrong. It is... Uh, in a way, insult to our Savior. You are special. You are special. For you, yes, each one in this room, for you especially, there was a supreme counsel. Hallelujah. Then it says that, uh, for which we have believed, this, uh, this process was a complete process, which means everything was done up there in heaven. That says that, as he has sworn in my wrath, wrath, that they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundations of this world. This choice, this work of choice was already finished before the foundations of the world. I know it looks mysterious, but God already did it. Hallelujah. When he spoke in the spirit, when he spoke then, when he decided then, it was already done. Which means, when you begin to read the word of God, you begin to believe in it it is already done hallelujah this is why the bible says oh we walk by faith not by sight when you believe for healing it is not when the manifestation happens you begin to see with your eyes abraham rejoiced to see my days oh the bible says oh he began to see saviors on the cross the Bible says in Isaiah 53, oh, that Isaiah almost had a video recording of what was happening on the cross. They saw the end from the beginning. Time does not in any way hinder the work of God. For God, time is just an island in 
this eternity so he can already see the end from the beginning. He can already see what he is going to do. Therefore, times and seasons don't hinder him. Times and seasons are in his hands. Praise the Lord. So it was a completed work for verily foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last days. Hallelujah. We are the recipients of the manifested work of our Savior and we are so blessed which the Old Testament saints were seeking to see. When Isaiah writes in Isaiah 64, 4, he says, For since the beginning men have not heard, not even perceived into the, in, into the ears of men, not even into hear, is seen by men what God has kept for those whom he has prepared before the foundations of the world. Paul writes in another way, he says, Has not seen, eros has not heard, not even entered into the ears of men. What God has prepared for them who love before the foundations of the world. Oh, what he has prepared for you already has pre-designed and done before the foundations of the world. See the, the, see the strength of this is so strong that when time writes to the Titus, in Titus 2 he says like this, in the hope of eternal life, God who cannot lie promised before the world began, which there is no way God can go back from what he says. He can never retract from what he says. That is the God you and I serve. Oh, a God is not a man. He should lie. You should always believe this word to the core, to the dog, to the detail. If he has said it, he will do it in your life. Oh, who oh, will come shall come and shall not delay but my just shall live by faith we shall not shrink back but if he shrinks back my heart is not pleased in him now faith is the substance of things hoped for evidence of things not seen by which the elders found good report the things that we see with our naked eyes were not made by the by the things of the naked eyes but by the invisible hand of god therefore he says but without faith it Possible to please God for the one who comes to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them who seek him diligently therefore by faith walk this journey and begin to claim oh by faith they subdued the mouth of the lion women received the dead back to life and by faith the walls of Jericho fall down by faith Rahab saved those who, who were of her household when the walls fell down that's the power of the cross hallelujah when you begin to believe those were the Old Testament saints we have much more in the New Testament hallelujah Thank you, Lord. See, the next part is, it was conceived in God. When, he, when God called Jeremiah, he said, said, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Praise God. Dear brother, God saw you before your mama and dada come together. Oh, praise the Lord. He saw your unformed body. He saw your unformed spirit. Then the Bible says, David writes, everything was written in his book. My prayer tonight is each one of you will fulfill what heaven has written about you. Not short circuit, not before time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, that was already conceived in the heart of God. Not only you were conceived in his heart, he created you. Oh, Paul says in Ephesians, for you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to good, do good works. You are his handiwork. He has, he, on, your, on you is his handprint. On you is his skill man, skillsmanship and his workmanship. Not only his cre he is creative, so are you creative. Oh, there is a creativity in you that is going to be unearthed in Jesus' name hallelujah oh he created you his hand is upon you he is the one who forms the babies in the womb the, the bible says in ecclesiastes chapter 11 this is like it is as the bones grow in the womb hallelujah so so are the ways of god who makes all which means the babies that are growing in the womb it is the hand fashioning of the almighty god Hallelujah. So there is a touch. There is an imprint. There is a fashioning. Oh, before this choice happened. 
not only he created you this is about the plan of the choice he called you the bible says in in romans for whom he predestinated them also he called them also he justified and whom he justified them also he glorified see the word called is very important hallelujah praise god for the calling he called us in that calling there is power there is provision there is promises oh there is everything for this life and life to come when john writes in 1 john oh verses 1 and 12 12 and 13 it says for as many as have received to them he gave the power see the secret of the receiving this choice is now comes to your court he created you he conceived you it was a concealing matter in your heart but now you need to receive him all you have to tell is jesus into my life oh jesus take the reins of my life oh you are the boss of my life from this day forth i submit to you oh i am united with you see that is the secret the moment you open with your heart and believe in your heart the greatest miracle of eternity begins to happen that the world has not seen hallelujah now the power of this calling is not you were not born the moment you received him you were not born by the will of man which means it, it what it means to say is when a man and woman come together and they desire to have a child it is not like that you are not the choice of man's desire but you are the choice of god's desire because it says you were in the will of the father will of god but of god so you are born of god hallelujah see the power of this choice you were born of god which means you carry the dna of your heavenly father which means you begin to be like that that is why paul says put off the former conversation there is a former conversation that devil always tries to bring back talk language of the king you are a royalty for you are royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people called from darkness to marvelous light to show forth his goodness and grace so that is the power of his calling for the jesus said many are called but only few are chosen so the choice is because when you respond to the choice for a moment i want to talk about the calling of few of the disciples in the bible You know Peter Jesus said follow me he left his forsook his boat and his net and followed after Jesus when we follow Jesus there is a forsaking of the world there is cutting the umbilical cords of this world Jesus said to this rich man oh let the let leave sell all that you have and follow after me it was so hard for him the call was there but he did not receive the choice for because he was so much in the world let us cut every umbilical cord let us cut everything that hinders us from following jesus because all that you need all that you are seeking is only found i say it's only found in jesus hallelujah so we talked about the plan of choice we talked about the process of choice we we'll now talk about the privileges of this choice the first the privilege of this choice is his righteousness hallelujah oh yes you are righteous oh yes you are no more sinner saved by grace don't even say that oh that's why james says prayer of the righteous i said prayers the righteous prayer in Jesus Christ has a mighty wonder working power hallelujah you are in right standing with God not of your but his that is why Paul says oh those who are in Christ Jesus oh there is no condemnation or oh, no condemnation when the devil comes with condemnation or somebody comes with them who shall lay a charge on God select it's God and God alone who justifies hallelujah not only are you righteous the garment of righteousness has been put on you which means 
your sin your weakness your background your infirmity is no more seen all is seen is jesus the divine exchange has happened his righteousness has been put basically jesus standing on your behalf the next privilege is you have been justified by faith when you believed by faith immediately what happened in the courtroom of heaven was heaven said that he or she has received jesus every charges every i said every charges every accusations every allegations everything was said has been dropped hallelujah as if you have never committed sin in your life just as if you have never sinned your life that is what is called justification or oh, not only justified you were sanctified by his blood oh the sprinkling of the blood it cleanses me oh that is why it says if we confess sins he is faithful and just to forgive us and the blood of jesus christ oh the blood of jesus christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness so that is the privilege of sanctification you have been sanctified by his blood and by his word because jesus said thy word is truth and sanctify them by the word of their truth not only you were sanctified you have been glorified oh praise the lord you are glorified oh you are elevated to that same place hallelujah that is why jesus prayed in john 17 the glory that i have i give to them father the glory oh yes when somebody says oh don't touch his glory that is about the flesh now i am living in the spirit hallelujah i am not oh yes i am a partaker of his glory the bible says the ministry of death or oh, engraven stones was glorious how much more the ministry of the spirit is exceeds far in glory second corinthians chapter 3 so you become partakers of his glory hallelujah not only partakers of his glory you are in his family let me explain that you know normally all over the world it is a democratic setup and people are chosen to be elected and placed by the choice of man and they have they only are for a temporary period and then they have to vacate the the office if they lose or if if their term is over but that is not how it is when heaven chose you it was not like oh now i have elected you now I'm i will drop you down no it is not how it is uh, it was heaven's executive like the un security council has something called veto power to the permanent power, permanent members there is a greater veto power oh the king of kings and the lord of lords my heavenly father vetoed on you and me that is why oh if god is for us who can be against us who shall lay a charge on god select it's god alone who justifies hallelujah so you have been vetoed which means nobody can take you out oh you are a part of the parliament of heaven oh which means when you open and begin to pray you are not standing you may be seated, your body is seated in that orange pews but your spirit is in the heavenly places and you are standing like an ambassador like a senator oh that is why i always say some of you might sometimes scratch your head and think what is pastor saying everything is decided in this room not in the white house when we pray when we pray i said when the church begins to pray you are senators ambassadors that decide what happens in this world hallelujah that is the kind of power we carry and the devil has played tricks of lie that's why jose says my people perish for the lack of knowledge it is in the knowledge there is power when you know the truth no one can destroy your life no charge who can lay a charge on you god is the one who has to lay a charge on you he says no charge the woman caught in adultery came to jesus and that woman when she came to her came to jesus these people brought him oh master she was caught in the very act 
which means uh, there was also a man involved. I'm not going into that. But what I mean to say is when the world says, oh, you are a you are sinner, you are this, that, whatever has been labeled, that's okay. But Jesus stoops down. That's what he did. Oh, he bent down and said, oh, daughter, neither do I condemn you. Oh, he does not condemn you. Never look with the eyes of condemnation. That's the devil. Look the Christ consciousness in your life. You're in the family of God. You're the partakers of all blessings. Hallelujah. Every blessing is yours first. See, that is why Christians should come to the top. But we need to possess the land. The rules of Joshua have not changed. You have to go and take some mountains. This year I am prophesying, begin to take those mountains on which the enemy is seated. It's your season. It is your season to go and sit on those mountains. Begin to believe. Begin to declare. Take the steps of faith. You are in the family of God. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Oh, call forth to, 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 to say his praises and call from darkness into marvelous light. Another privilege is he has avenged you. He has avenged you from everything the enemy has thrown at you. We talked about... The plan, the process, the privileges, and finally, that leads us to certain responsibilities. Paul, uh, Peter says, wherefore, brethren, give diligence to make sure your calling and election sure that if you do these things, you will never fail. See, there is something that is make your calling and election sure, which means completely, I know it, 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 that Jesus has called me and therefore nobody can or in any way create a doubt or take me out of that. That should be so deeply engraved in each one of us. That's the most important thing. If the Lord has called you, that's why Paul says, faithful is the one who has called us and he will do it even to the end. So you be sure about your calling. Yes, oh, I know it, I know it. It is that calling is not based upon an organization or a church. It is the calling of heaven. Let me give the three specialities of this calling. It's a high calling, which means, oh, you have a very high responsibility. It's a holy calling and it's a heavenly calling. Another responsibility. Because you are an elect, because you are chosen, put on, therefore, as elect, holy, beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long-suffering. Let us put on the character in our life. Let the nature of more reflect truth, more you like Jesus, the more you become like Jesus, more the power of Jesus will flow in and through you. The last one, since you have been chosen, you no more entangle and war in the civilian affairs of this world, for you have been drafted by the master. Now you don't dabble in the world. You have been set apart as kingdom. So that is uh, so that you are holy and blameless unto the Lord. And verse 5 says, having predestinated. That's the next part. What does it mean by predestination? It means there was a predesign. Oh, there was a design about your life. Like when we begin to make a house or a building, there is an architecture. My brother, my sister, there was a heavenly architecture that heaven was designing about your life. Predestined a design the way your life would be. Every day I pray this prayer. Oh God, whatever you predesigned for me in eternity, you can also pray that prayer. Oh God, let me align myself. Let me fulfill all the designs of heaven that was designed for my life. Let me not short circuit this. Hallelujah. A scripture is it says in your books everything was written and appointed. So why does he predestinate? 
Romans 8 29 he says for whom he foreknew he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren hallelujah so the the ultimate pre-design or the predestination the what was the reason for this predestination is you and I become like Jesus now you will ask me a question why to become like Jesus there is yes let me answer when God created Adam, he was the son of God. The Bible says in Luke, as Luke traces back to the genealogy of Jesus, that son of Adam, which was the son of God. Yes, he carried the title of the son of God, but he lost it. See, that because of that losing, he lost that dominion. Jesus as the second Adam, oh, he took back that dominion. You and I can get back that when we become like Jesus, when, we be, when Jesus takes more and more of you you become like Jesus as many as are led of the spirit they are called the sons of God for he has given us the spirit of adoption not of fear but to call Abba father that is why the Bible says again in Romans 8 oh yes the the creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God you are the sons I mean let me let me clarify it over here when I say the word son daughters are also included it's a title it's not a gender thing which means means when you begin to follow when you begin to live in the spirit when you begin to walk in the spirit you when you walk in love you begin to reflect and you begin to grow into sonship you are no more a child you are no more a babe tossed about now you are becoming in the sonship what for to become like Jesus that is why in different ways Paul says in Galatians 4.19 that Christ may be formed in you. So that is the ultimate. What is the ultimate of a Christian in life? To become like Jesus. It is not at all a blasphemy because as he is, so are we in this world. As I was with Josh Moses, so I'll be with you. That's a powerful statement which means you are replacing now on earth as you become more and more like Jesus you become you begin to do not only the works of Jesus but so greater works all oh, the things that I did not only will you do but greater works hallelujah you grow to the measure and stature of Jesus uh, Ephesians 4 30 and Colossians 1 18 says uh, that 28 says uh, we present every man perfect in so the, predest the reason for predestination is to become like Jesus. Why predestination? How can we fulfill predestination in our life? We need to grow. There is a growth in Christian life. Paul says, by speaking truth in love, speaking the truth in love, may grow up into all things, even, uh, even the head, even as Christ. How you can grow? Paul Peter says, as the newborn babes desire the sins the milk, desire the sincere milk of the word. How you can grow? Grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. How you can grow? Oh, the strong meat belongs to the matured. Those who skillfully discern and use the word. And this is how you begin to grow. Hallelujah. How you can grow? Being led, living in the spirit. How can you live in the spirit and walk in the spirit? By walking in love. Galatians chapter 5, it says, but the fruit of the spirit, not fruits, is love. Then is the comma, which means rest of the eight are the characters of, of love when you begin to walk in love you are living in the spirit hallelujah you are walking in the spirit and as you but as many are led of the spirit they are called the sons of god so you're slowly growing and becoming into his image hallelujah and as you walk in faith surrendering See, there is another aspect of growth is faith. There are, one is the, the common faith or the faith for salvation. Another is the contending faith. That's why Jude says earnestly contending for faith. A mountain moving faith. A faith that sees beyond the impossible. You begin to believe for things that in the natural seems seamlessly, seems impossible. 
Hallelujah. See, that is what Jesus has done for us. He has chosen and predestinated us and he has adopted us. That's a very special legal term. A legal adoption has happened. You're part of that family to the praise and the glory of, of his grace. I'll close it over here. I'll close it over here. Paul then again burst forth into praise and glory of his grace. What is this grace? And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory full of grace and truth. And of his fullness he has given us grace for grace. <clears throat> grace is the person of Jesus Christ. Grace is the treasure house of heaven that was emptied, which means for your lack, grace is the replacement. Or oh, you lack, lack in wisdom, take his grace. You lack in, in anything, take his grace. His grace has everything. And that grace is in the person of Jesus Christ. You are all that. That's why we seek that thing. All that I need. That is the true meaning. Oh yes, I'm rip so he's he's now getting into a mode of praising. Hallelujah. See, praise and thanksgiving is the secret to keep growing in the identity of Christ. I'll again repeat that. The proportion to which you begin to praise and thank the Lord and honor him, the more you will grow in his identity. To whom much is forgiven, he is much indebted. That is how Christian life should be. It's a great grace. Hallelujah. Grace itself needs a lot of attention and a lot of teaching. So I'm not going to go there. It's by grace. So when you come to God, when you come to Jesus... All you have to do is tap into his grace. Tap into his grace. Let us therefore boldly come to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and help in time of need. Somebody watching on the internet, somebody listening right now, you need grace. It's available. It's available. The wonderful grace of Jesus is available. He has chosen you. He has loved you with his amazing love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, this word has begun to manifest great things. Many are going to be touched. Those who are going to watch it, Lord, I pray even those, each one of us who have heard it tonight, their lives are going to be transformed by the amazing power of God. I pray through the teaching of the book of Ephesians, each one of us who uh, will oh, understand and reach to the full potential heaven has for us. Uh, Lord, this 2020 will be a year of breakthroughs. I decree and declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, that 2019 is under the blood. It's a new big a new era, a new season, hallelujah. No more the enemy can keep you under his thumb. That days are over. Devil, oh sorry, that's too late. I am under the sovereign plan of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. We love you. We praise you. We adore you. We give you the praise and the honor. Hallelujah.